And all right, that looks like we're live. Hello, everyone. I am Daddy War Crimes. Welcome to the shop. And uh, this is my new time slot, apparently. So I'm going to be talking to myself until people find out I'm here. But while well, we're here, let's uh, let's get to work. Not exactly sure what I'm going to accomplish today, but we have got. Our uh, walnut sides right here. So um, we do need to work on one of those to get the miters back. And for anyone who's tuning in or following up since last time, we screwed this guy up right here. So we're going to have to fix that and hopefully not tear it out this time. Um, first thing, though, we should put together our smoothing plane, and uh, have a screwdriver around here somewhere. There we go. We're going to need this. Had it taken apart because I was sweating a lot and uh, sweat with high carbon steel does not match very well. Okay, is this? I think this is it. A scrap piece. Test my cuts. That's a big thick shaving. We don't like that. Now let's uh, let's back that off quite a bit. Might be helpful to look at the blade before you start cutting with it. But... Oh boy. So we're going to do that, aren't we? So I've got to mess with my settings here on the tablet so I can actually see chat. Let's do... Settings. Where are settings at? If anybody decides to come in and start talking to me right now, I'm going to miss you. I apologize. But I think that's very, very unlikely. So display... Screen timeout. Never. Okay, we're gonna have to go look for thirty minutes. Um. Yeah, hopefully that works. 
Never can tell. All right, back here. it and let's just hook this glue up actually so I tried attacking this with the jack plane last time with uh, with my scrub blade in it and that caused a massive amount of tear out so I had to uh, glue and clamp that try and repair it and I do see a little bit of a crack, but I think we'll be okay. Because I'm cutting a lot of this back off. Let's see if we can get a better shot of that. So yeah, this is this is where it broke off um, before. And we're probably not going to be able to see that too well. But that's where it is. So I'm trying to be a bit careful about this to prevent any further chip out, which is why I'm approaching it from this side. A little tear out on the far side is going to be okay because we've got a long way to go still. Tend to have a little bit of oil and looks like school's out. Is that the bus? And this so far has been the best way I've been able to figure out how to do these miter cuts. make sure to stay within the lines and that's, that's all I got to do here. Actually, I think what I'm going to try and do over on this side, maybe relieve this with a little bit of chamfer for now. Again, watching the lines, that's very, very important. I'm gonna to want to do that um, part with sandpaper. So I got a little bit of a uh, loose squeeze out and such from the repair. Thank <laughs> you. 
Check that it's square across, and it's fairly square. Check the 45. Good to go. And on to the last miter. Last miter of the box. Still love these shapes. These are wonderful little shavings. Just skew the iron, cuts just fine. No real issues at all. And once this last one is cut, we can all be friends. And assemble the shadow box. Okay. periodically check to make sure we're making even cuts, which seems are not quite. That's okay, we've got plenty of room to maneuver still. Green's doing what the green will do when it encounters such knots. For some reason, trees want to grow branches. Never could understand that. But we're just going to have to deal with it, aren't we? Quite as square as I would have liked it. Oh, it's okay from that end. But yeah, okay, so that's my reference face, so we'll be okay. I believe we are as close to 45 as I could reasonably hope for. So let's see, reference faces go up. And here is our box. Well, what there is of it. So I think that's going to be relatively square. Um, so next order of business. So I need a rabbit.
And I thought I was going to be doing the um, the splines on here, so I'm going to do faux dovetail splines. But I don't think I'm going to be ready for that just yet, because um, that's going to be the one of the last things I want to do. I want to. Let's see, how do, how do I explain this? Um, make sure I'm getting the face. So, just, which is my reference edge? Is this my reference edge? That's gonna be the reference edge. All right. Really, I do. I know where I am. Okay. So that goes there, there, and this one will go here. Okay. So I'm going to go off the back edge. So that's going to be the inside back edge. So let's see. How do I want to do this? Flip these around, just I want to keep them in the right order so the grain stays properly aligned. It's the face, so I want the back edge. No, they're still all the same orientation. Groovy. Um, how do I want to hold these down? Let's go, let's go on the edge of the workbench. I think this will be nice. I'll move this out of the way. And we'll get a hold fast. So we'll hold it fastly. And I'm gonna need a mallet. We'll whack it. No. This is a terrible hold fast hole. It's uh giving me a lot of trouble of late. Not cooperating. And it's blowing out quite a bit too. Oh man. Now, I'm not sure how to remedy that just yet. So, here's my rabbit plane. And I'm going to need. Well, let's make a test cut first, shall we? Now, actually, I think first and foremost, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's take out the cutter. Make it sharp. If anybody happens to be watching, feel free to chime in at any time. I'm happy to answer questions, take advice, discuss completely off-topic scenarios. That's fine. It gets a little lonely in the shop sometimes. All right. So I want to kind of set this up. We're building down here, aren't we? I want the plane blade to overhang the body just the smallest, smallest fraction of an inch. Okay, why aren't you engaging, lever cap? That's how we're gonna work. Okay. I don't need much of a rabbit. 
maybe quarter inch. And this is just for the bagger. So it can be recessed in about a quarter inch. Um, and we'll make it relatively square. So, let's uh, get my test piece out. This hold fast is doing me absolutely no favors. Come on, hold fast. Earn your keep. There we go. And we're just going to see if this cut's going to be appropriate for us. Okay, need a bit more depth. We do this on cheap wood because walnut is expensive. It's like uh, eight fifty a board foot for that stuff, so I am not wasting it if it can be helped at all. be a bit more aggressive. And here we go again with the hold fast. Come on, work with me. I really hope I didn't... Uh... Is that going to be a draw? Um, not sure what you mean by that. going to draw on it, that's for sure. Not going to have a contest. But uh, it's a, just a, this is a rebate or a rabbit. If you're, uh, depending on if you're European or American. And it's just a small recess to allow a backing board to, uh, to rest in it. Are we to depth already? Yeah, we are. Okay, do I have any quarter inch ply hanging around? Quarter inch, quarter inch, or half inch. That's not what we need. Uh... Where did I throw it all away? I may have tossed it all. Okay, well let's, uh, let's use this. That's a quarter inch. Okay, um, so it's going to rest like this. Okay, so it does need to go in a bit. No, not a drawer. We're doing a shadow box. So uh, I'm going to need to move my fence just a smidge. Well, actually, how about this? How about we use the actual material so we can, you know, get a proper reference off of it? That would make sense. Yeah, I haven't uh, actually attempted to make a drawer ever, so that would be an adventure for me. All right. We should be ready, so that's the front, so this is the back. So is it uh, Adri, Ad, Adri Caillou? 
something like that. I pronounce names uh, kind of poorly sometimes, especially if I'm unfamiliar with them. We'll start at the front, kind of work our way back. Actually, let's back off the iron a little bit, maybe clear out these shavings. And if uh, I do end up uh, making up a name for you, please don't be offended. It's just uh, how I deal with my own personal limitations sometimes. I don't believe I've seen you on the stream before. It's German. Uh, okay, this is walnut, dark walnut. And one of the more expensive domestic offerings we have here. But it is a lovely wood, makes wonderful shavings. Yeah. Doesn't have much of an odor like oak and pine do. Yeah, this is uh, actually just my second time working with, with walnut. Um, the only other experience I have with it was when I was making my mallet. And so this is the mallet. It's got maple on the inside, walnut on the edges. Maple's another really fun wood. Very tight grain structure, which uh, I can appreciate. Maple's very hard. Walnut's a bit softer than maple. And so I just had something happen. Unfortunately, is that a host or a follow? I've got uh, this tablet up here that I'm trying to monitor chat and events with, but it's not set up all as well as I had hoped. Hosted me. Ah, thank you, X-Ray, and uh, welcome to the stream. Hopefully the new time slot hasn't messed anybody up. I'm just trying to, uh... adjust my schedule for classes, which start tomorrow. Sorry, I haven't caught one of your streams lately. What have you been working on? And when it stops cutting, that's when we know we're done. So I'm, I'm trying to be smart about the order in which I'm, I'm putting this together. So I know I have to do rabbits on the inside, and I'm going to have to put like a lip over the other side. Preparing for a two-week getaway at the family cabin and streaming Fallout 3. You know what? I actually think I, I did catch a little bit of your Fallout 3 stream. Um, but yeah, unfortunately I lost interest very quickly. Because, uh, not a, not a big fallout guy. Let's, let's move this camera. Uh. But as I was saying, so I gotta put, like, a, a lip over the, uh, over the front of it to, with, uh, retain the glass that's gonna be in there. And I need to do that before I assemble it because I'm going to be doing um, spline joints. And I want the spline joints to be evenly spaced from front to back, right? And so I don't know what even space is going to be until I have that front on there. And I don't want to put the front on there until I get this because, well, 
Or at least I have I have to do the miner before I assemble the spline joints as well. I hope that all made sense. Because it doesn't really make all that much sense to me. Yeah, I um as far as Fallout, I recently started the uh the Fallout Shelter game. Because you know, I'm all about the idle base building games. Those are those are lots of fun. But I was uh That sounds like a follow, and that was from uh, Idrikayu. Hopefully I pronounced that wrong again. Just gonna call you Adrian for now. Wish we had internet at the cabin, but it's better not. I have to repair a roof and install new windows. <laughs> Streaming that work will never get done. Depends. Are you going to be streaming, putting in the windows, or repairing the roof? One of the things I, I uh, streaming does slow me down a little bit. Um, but it gives me a specific time frame in which to actually do the work. So while I may not be as productive each hour in the workshop, I'm spending more hours in the workshop. <sighs> have I done a dovetail joint before? Yes, I have done uh, numerous dovetail joints. Not especially good at them. Um, let's see, do I have any fine examples? Oh yeah. This was my last project. This was uh, very much an experiment, but awful, awful dovetails example right there. This is a bookend. I made two of them, mostly for the point of testing mitered mortise and tenon and string inlays and also these curves. Never get them to be pretty. You know, it's, it's kind of hit or miss for me. Sometimes I can, sometimes, uh, sometimes they self-destruct when I try to assemble them. But I imagine it's one of those things that just comes with practice. And supposedly there are some foolproof methods, I don't trust those. teaches uh, some really weird off-the-wall techniques. He, he's a bit more unconventional, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend his methods. Um, one thing I did find is a good saw really makes all the difference. So I had, uh, I think what was, um, I believe the brand was Deer, but it was kind of like a gent saw with a, uh, with a straight handle and uh, not entirely dissimilar to what Two Cherries offers. But uh, after doing very poorly with that so I picked up this Veritas well no that's that's the that's the carcass saw this guy Veritas dovetail saw with a little pistol grip on it love this thing these are wonderful saws I highly recommend them and I am not sponsored by anybody so my recommendations are as of yet not influenced by money Speaking of money, it looks like I am two followers away from meeting the requirements for affiliate, which would be my only barrier for making money directly from Twitch. All right, 
that's three. And one more for good measure. I give that a shot. Uh, yep. Yeah, um, if if you want to do good dovetails, good saw is is certainly recommended. Um, but it's it's more likely the practice which is really going to make the difference. What are you using to uh, mark them? Are you uh, doing a bevel gauge? Do you have a dovetail marker? Okay, and that was a follow. So the, the Sun LC. Well, thank you, Sun. I'm glad to have you here. Did you do all your chores tonight, son? And again, this, uh, this is a rabbit plane. And because I've got a depth stop on there, as soon as I get to the appropriate depth, it will just stop cutting. And when it stops cutting, that's no when I know I'm done. And the beautiful thing about uh, doing miter joints, or one of the beautiful things about doing miter joints um, over, uh, say, dovetails on corners like this, is that I can do the rabbit all the way around and I don't have to do a stopped rabbit, which are, I can do them, they are a pain. It's just drawing them by hand. Guess that's also a reason why. Yeah. Yeah, you probably don't want to do that. So, um, for about 10 bucks, plus obviously shipping, you can get a dovetail template. And just an example, uh, something like this, right? So I've got a one and eight. Let's see if I can get closer here. I don't know if you can see this, but it's got a, about a one and eight bevel on the sides and it's square across the top. So um, if I just stick this on a bit of wood, I can maybe find something that's sharp. Let's try, let's try that properly, okay? So, mark the face, mark across, and then go a little bit closer, and, because you don't necessarily want to use the width, just the angles. Mark the face, mark across, and that gives you the exact angle that you're looking to, um, to cut at. Now, if you're just doing dovetails, that's a, a that's a good way of doing it. Um, you can make those. I've got a video on that uh, if on my YouTube channel, and I believe in my videos on Twitch, it should still be there. Um, otherwise, get yourself down to the Home Depot, find yourself a sliding bevel gauge, and you might not be able to see it, but I've actually got marks here on my bench top. So I measured uh, at a square line, square to the face of the bench, then I measured over like one inch, and then made a mark about nine inches on this side, eight inches on this side, so I just lined it up, gives me a one and nine pitch, or I flip it over, line it up, gives me a one and eight pitch. So just depending on uh, what angle you want your dovetails to be, one and seven, one and eight, one and nine is a about uh, all you're going to need for most common purposes. Make sure this is this is two. Should that be two? What's this? That's two. I can't have two twos. That's one, two, 
So this should be three and four. Okay, so we're looking good there. So, um, I'm still not ready for the spline joints yet. Actually, I don't think I'm going to get to the spline joints today. So, I need to create a lip. Which, fortunately, I've got offcuts. And unfortunately, I didn't uh, actually have the offcuts prepared for this purpose because it didn't occur to me that I would need this lip earlier on. Okay, so what I'm going to do, um, that's a face, that's, is this a true edge? Well, we'll make it a true edge. There was an errant marking gauge line in there. Oh, still there, still there. Gotta take that out. I marked it incorrectly. So, we can double check for the square. Oh, that is not square at all. Not at all. And this is one technique I have adopted from Rob Kasman, even though I generally don't like him, or like his methods, I should say. I'm sure he's a fine fellow. But uh, you rest the sole, the edge of the sole, on the part that you don't want to cut because the blade doesn't protrude out that way. And then just make a couple passes after the fact to level it out. And that should be about as good as I'm going to get her. Now, shouldn't need this setting anymore. So, we want probably at least a quarter inch beyond. Let's well, actually use the, the piece we're working on. So, we want to protrude about maybe five sixteenths. There are no plans here. There are no measurements. We just kind of guess. <laughs> and usually it works out well enough. Okay, measure against our true face. And I think we can probably squeeze two boards out of this. And I think I'm gonna try and do So imagine this is the face of it, that's the overlay. I'm um, gonna thin this out definitely, but I'm thinking maybe a string inlay with basswood there. And just because string inlay is my new toy, so yeah, inlay like that. I think that might look nice. Who knows? I've never tried this before. Get in the vise so we don't mark it wrong. Use as many hands as you can. Three when available. And I actually hope at some point to start making marking gauges like these. So this is a this is an old Stanley number sixty one marking gauge is what it tells me. 
And it's got a wood thumb screw. Which I find significantly more pleasing than metal thumb screws. Yeah, uh, one of the disappointing things I found about, uh, I found with the uh, bookends, and that was basswood against uh, red oak, is there was definitely not enough contrast. That and that inlay is going to be covered up by books, so it's kind of kind of a silly thing to do in the first place. All right, um, that should be sufficiently marked for my purposes. I'm saving this marking gauge. Don't adjust it. But yeah, like uh, this guy right here with the metal thumb screw. Don't much care for that. It works. Don't, just don't really care for it. But that's the only mortise gauge I have. And I need a saw. Let go. You're coming with me. Come with me or there will be trouble. Old things are the best things. Not always. Not always. For example, um, one of my more recent acquisitions is this uh, number 13 plane. And the number 13 was one of the first um, circular or compass plane offerings that Stanley had. And they replaced it later on with the number 20, I believe, and the number 113. And the 20 and the 113 are vastly superior to the number 13. So the, the newer models that they have, much, much better, much more uh, easier to adjust and easier to adjust accurately. That and this plane, I mean, this is, uh, this was brand new when I bought it a couple of years ago. It's a uh, Wood River. And it blows the socks off a lot of the, stand, the old Stanleys. All right, so, make sure to get a good parallel cut to the line. Nice little curve established. Let's uh, get some oil on here. Prevent binding. But yeah, there, there are a lot of good, good old planes as well. They're just not necessarily better than all the stuff that's new. And say, for example, um, this plane right here. This is this is number four. So this cost me, I think, 150 bucks somewhere around right about there. Now you can you can get an old Stanley, um, which is going to be more or less comparable, or, or it, it's going to be a lot. It's going to be very very serviceable um, for you know 10 20 bucks, right? And, but the problem is if you want to get like, uh, say, if you head to Home Depot and pick up a Buck Brothers plane, or if you head to Lowe's and pick up the Cobalt planes, those things are just terrible. They're, you're, you're not going to get decent cuts out of them. So you're better off with a Stanley than with one of the new planes that you can find at, say, a hardware store. <laughs> But if you're if you want to say go to a specialty shop, you go to Lee Valley, pick up a Veritas plane, or or you go to Lee Nielsen, or even one of these Wood Rivers, which is the cheaper of the nicest planes, or the cheapest of the nicer planes, I should say. I mean, you're you're going to pay a lot more, but you're going to get a really good quality tool. And uh, here's another thing. So this is um, this guy right here. This is my only. Uh, Lee Nielsen plane. So Lee Nielsen is supposed to be like one of the top tier tool manufacturers for hand tools. And this guy cost me about 150 bucks. And it's probably better than what uh, what an old Stanley would be. But an old Stanley, if you're going to get the whole thing, is going to be 150 bucks. So it was, you know, 150 bucks to buy an inferior old tool or or the same price to uh, to get a brand new high quality tool. Well, 
you know, I, I like junk I can get for cheap so long as it's not junk. here so we can saw better and that means I need are you gonna work for me no you're not okay how about this we think this through and we take a water break so yeah um, if you can uh, tell maybe this is my First ever attempt at a dovetail joint. <laughs> it weren't pretty. Okay. Just trying to think of a way um, to compensate for the racking that I know is going to happen. So, that's good. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's the joint I made with the, uh, the deer brand saw. I think that's what it was. I think that was a brand anyway, but uh, yeah. my next one, um, trying to think if I have it. Oh, there it is. It's under the bench. This was my second attempt at dovetails after I got the Veritas saw. So yeah, that one did quite a bit better. And Veritas saws aren't too terribly pricey. They're about, uh, I think, 50, 60 bucks, something like that, last I checked. And I cut down kind of at an angle so I can follow the line a lot better, keeps, helps keep the saw more in line with the, uh, the score that I made. And the kerf that I had cut previously kind of keeps the saw in line as well. Okay. Let's see. This is where you need three hands again. Now this is uh, one of the reasons I keep these around because most of the material I'm working with is three quarters so I can just slip that right in there and it prevents racking. But this is about Five eighths now thick, so I planed it down. Keep, not this one, okay. Keep your wooden line. 
keep it sorted properly. Now, but I, uh, I've got two panel saws like right there hanging from the side of the bench. And one's a cross cut and the other's a uh, four tooth per inch rip saw. And that was the first rip saw I had, so that's why I put that there. But I'm, I find I'm not really using the four tooth as much because I got this uh, this new guy. This is about seven teeth per inch, so it gets a much finer cut. Try and get down to my lines here. And it occurs to me that I don't know what time it is. Hmm. Probably should have added that to the program, so. Really fun. I'm trying to uh, find a good way to monitor chat and such. So I've got this tablet right here. And I kind of uh, created a small Android app which basically just incorporates Streamlab elements. So there's the events list, there's the chat, there's the current followers, and events goes right there, but the way I've got it situated, because I suck at this sort of thing, uh, I can't actually see what those events are, only that events are happening. But I probably should put a clock on there as well. Okay, maybe over at the computer. It's uh, 4 o'clock, or 5 to 4, so I got time, I got time, I don't have to be anywhere until about 6.30, where I have to actually meet up with a local woodworking club. Because string inlays were last month's challenge. So, taking in the bookends to show those off. And I'm also going to take in uh, this guy, which is the scratch stock that I used to make them, which is ugly as hell, but it's made me want to make marking gauges. What classes are you taking? What's the goal? Um, this semester I'm taking algebra and English. It's like English 2 and world history. So basically gen eds. And two computer science courses. Uh, one is C programming and the other is ethics. And the goal is a bachelor's in computer science. Or at least that's the state of the goal. The real goal is to be a full-time student for a period of 36 months, cumulative, not consecutive, in order to maximize my uh, collection of benefits under the Chapter 33 post 9-11 Montgomery GI Bill. Okay, so we're going like, yeah. And we'll glue these together, cut that miter. Yes, for, for some reason, despite the fact that I have absolutely no experience with them. I'm I'm more attracted to C and of course C++ um, rather than the more high level stuff. I don't know why, it's just what I seem to want to learn rather than say Java or you know, whatever Python. But of course it really doesn't matter important thing is to learn coding, not to learn 
the language, right? Okay, so that's going to be one. How about you? Are you going to be? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can definitely work with this. That's, uh, okay, so that's, that's a square face right there. So let's make a reference edge off here. I've dabbled a little bit with Visual Basic. That was mostly uh, copy and paste. Used to work with a company that did control boards for trucks. I imagine that would be interesting. I'm assuming we're, we're talking about like modern 18-wheeler style trucks, over-the-road trucking. I've seen some of their cockpits. They are ridiculously complex. Very much unlike the equipment I used to work with in the Army. Which it didn't matter how user-friendly it was so long as it could withstand nuclear blasts. Or at least EMP. You know, I mean, nothing's going to withstand a nuclear blast if you're close enough to it. But if you build it right, you can protect and shield against, you know, EMP. How we looking there? That's going to do her. Okay, so let's see how much material we have to take off. So obviously, with this little stock that I have to remove, I'm not going to be doing with this, this with the saw. I think I may be able to justify a couple quick passes with the scrub plane. More likely, I'm just going to use the number four and the number four. I find quite a bit of my time in woodworking is squandered by trying to figure out which tool I should be using. Like, uh, trying to find an example. But with the, uh, with that mallet build, the mallet's kind of angular, right? So it had kind of a wedge to take off. And first thing I thought when, when I decided, okay, I'm going to take out the material. It's like, okay, let me, let me pull out the number six plane. That seems like a good way of doing it. And then after quite a while of that, this was before I got the number five and with the scrub iron on it. You know, I tried one between the number number six and the number four, and uh, at one point realized, huh, I have chisels. I could have been done like half an hour ago. A company called Man. It was indeed complex. Falls asleep, driver would recognize. Um, now, Man, if I'm if I don't recall, that's that's a European brand of truck. Um, is that the same company I'm thinking of? Uh, saw them a lot when I was uh, doing my tour in Bosnia. Big meaty curls, good for starting barbecues. Yeah, scrub plane make real quick work of this. And that was, I've got who is on first. Thank you for the follow who.
Appreciate you having me in, or appreciate having you in the workshop. And I think that might bring me to 50. I can't be certain. What's the counter say? Oh, you are magic number 50. Worked in Munich a lot. Okay. Yeah, I, I only spent a, a couple, maybe an hour or so in Ramstein Air Base. <laughs> and that was kind of a layover. That was my experience with Germany. Oh, and back in 97, when I came out of basic, I was supposed to be assigned in Germany as my first duty station, but that fell through and I wound up in Kansas instead. Which was okay. Well, you didn't have to, who, but uh, again, always happy to have you on board. Are you a woodworker as well? We'd just like to see what your fellow veterans are up to. Very close. Not close enough for my purposes. Just poking around in creative. Yeah. Well, there's a there's a there's a lot going on in creative. Always is. Not too many of us woodworkers though, so that's uh it's one of the reasons why I'm here. Still kind of niche, at least within Twitch. Unlike in say YouTube, where there's woodworkers everywhere. <laughs> That's where that's where the woodworking live streams really seem to be prevalent is on is over on YouTube. All the all the big guys do live streams. Your Wood Whisperer, your James Wright. Good guys on Twitch though. So if you're new to the uh woodworking streams. I'm a big fan of uh, Timber Anew. He's got a great stream. But he's more on European time. Alright. Which one's my face? That will be my face. Let's check for square. And what a surprise, we are not square. It's okay, we know how to fix that. Check a little off the right side. I'm gonna go three passes. One down the middle. Two down the middle. Not quite, not quite. So who did you serve with? Uh, who's on first? When can someone sub to you? Um, from what I understand, and I haven't, uh, I haven't done all the research I need to, this uh, 50 follower mark is the last step that I need in order to qualify to be affiliate. And so, maybe in a day or two, uh, Twitch will give me the option to switch my account over to an affiliate status and then I should be able to uh, accept subscribers.
Now, I haven't 100% said that I am going to do affiliate, most likely, but I'm not 100% sure. I still have to read the terms and condition. 20 years to Air Force, uh, thank you very much for your service. I did 20 in the Army. Just finished up uh, beginning of this year. So yeah, uh, hopefully, maybe by my next stream, I'll be able to get subscribers and, and bits. I'm not expecting much, but you know, anything I get will uh, just help me make the stream better, either by getting, uh, investing in new equipment, new, uh, new cameras, new lighting, computers, that sort of thing, or um, more interesting tools in wood. Uh, retired in 98. That was uh, a year after I enlisted. Hmm. Yeah, anything is better than nothing, but um, it's, it's not like the money doesn't come with stipulations. Right? So there, there are factors to consider um, when accepting that money. And I, I know a couple of streamers who are more than qualified. Um, in fact, uh, one of my favorites is a, a gal named uh, Geeky McFangirl. So she, she's qualified to be affiliate, but has deliberately decided against it. Just because of the implication, the of what other implications there are for that. So she does Patreon and probably some kind of donation thing. And I'm, I'm right now I'm set up for donations, but only for cryptocurrency. And make sure the line's straight. Very light curve. Ooh, I'm really close to the line right there. Better be careful. Uh, but yeah, I, I do the cryptocurrency donations, not that anyone actually has donated, um, but rather than say PayPal, because it's a lot safer for me. Because with PayPal, you can have charge banks, and there has been um, a tendency for people to make fraudulent donations and then make, um, do charge banks with PayPal. And... So the streamer initially thinks they're getting a bunch of money, but in the end of the day, they're actually having to pay money to PayPal because someone fraudulently charged them or fraudulently donated to them. So trying to avoid things of that nature. And I'm, I'm having trouble seeing my line because the way the light is shining on here. So I'm going to flip it over and cut from the other side. But yeah, one of the, the main ideas behind me streaming on Twitch is so I can possibly make money on it. Or more likely so I can have a tax write-off uh, and get deductions for buying all these tools and all this wood. Uh... Yeah, you can sub for free, but uh, as far as like donations, they um, Twitch had not set up a, a a method for donations until more recently. So, uh, and that was through the bit system. And obviously, again, the bits are only available to um, affiliates and partners with Twitch. So, a lot of folks before bits were around would just do uh, donations. They would, they would set up a PayPal and say, you can donate to my PayPal, you can give me a tip through my PayPal. Because that was the option that they had. So there are, there are numerous ways to monetize streaming. Um, yeah, just depends on which way you want to go about it. And I, I am proceeding with an abundance of caution simply because, you know, I'm 
I, I'm doing okay with my my army pension, but uh, it's 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 not a lot of money. <laughs> it's uh, I, I can't afford to be be paying for chargebacks multiple times a month because someone wants to troll me. <laughs> Now, if you're asking yourself, why am I moving the work piece? Why don't I just keep it up here? Because the farther it is away from where it's clamped, the more vibration it makes. Yeah, the Amazon Prime stuff is a, a, a really great benefit for streamers, I think. Because a lot of, a lot of people have Prime accounts, and... A lot of people, like me included, I don't want to subscribe to anybody. I don't have a Prime account either, that's in the wife's name, but uh, yeah, pretty much all I do is I watch ads and, and give people bits when I, uh, that I get from watching ads, because that's fun. It's not a lot, bits aren't worth very much, but you know, I'm willing to do this for free anyway. Because it's fun and it gets me into the workshop, if nothing else. face but you're planning the opposite face or the opposite edge I should say on this case is I don't actually have to make it flat I don't have to make it straight I just need to cut down until this until I get to this line it's the only thing that matters Once I get down to the line, uh oh. Okay, I'll, almost lost you guys there. Sorry, this is what I get for trying to build my own app to to watch uh, watch chat. Anyways, uh, once you get down to the line, it should be parallel to the reference edge because that's what we measured it off of. And if it's not, oh well, close enough, right? No one will know the difference.
Well, thank you for stopping by, and uh, thank you for the follow, too. And I'll be back Friday around about the same time. So that's, uh, that's 3 o'clock Central Time, I hope. I'm not committed to that yet. And you know what? I should probably... mark these so I know which is the, the reference faces. It's going to be here and here. And you... I have no idea which one's the reference. Well, it's going to be you and you now. There we go. All right, last one. And I think I'm, oh yeah, that's definitely not square. My very, very favorite part of woodworking is being able to do something or attempt something that I don't actually think will work just because I don't think my skills are up to it. And then surprising myself when I'm successful. I love that feeling. And it may go away after a few more years. But so long as I can keep challenging myself with it, I, I just love this art. Love the craft. For some people, it's about the making, not me. Okay, so, base. For me, it's about the self-improvement more than anything. It doesn't matter what skill you're working on, if it's woodworking, if it's, you know, painting, ceramics, metalworking, blacksmithing, or programming, or playing an instrument. Nothing better than being able to master a skill, or at least improve a skill. And if it wasn't yet apparent to those of you who may not be great woodworkers yourself, I am not a, uh, I am by no means a professional, and my aim here is not to teach. I'll share what I know when I can, but I'm certainly not an expert. There's plenty of experts out there. I'm happy to recommend some, but I ain't one. <laughs> I learn what I can and make up the rest as I go. Okay. Green here is being a little bit tricky, so I think that's uphill. Yeah, we'll go that way. Take a few flat passes with the scrub plane, finish her out with the number four. And then I have to figure out how I'm going to do the miters.
Actually, I don't think I want to do the miners just yet. I think I want to do the inlays first. That probably makes more sense. Because that way I don't have to cut the inlays to meet the miters, right? Woodworking is an art, the art of not doing what the wood won't do. This is true. But it's also the art of learning what the wood can be tricked into doing. Which is why I, one of the reasons why it appeals to me. And it's, uh, it's actually one of the reasons why... So, the same thing that attracts me to coding, computer coding, the scripting and whatnot, is, is more or less the same thing that attracted me to woodworking. Is to take this material and rearrange it without discussing its fundamental properties in a manner to do things that it was by no means ever intended to do in the first place. Look out there. That's a tree. A tree is designed to hold up leaves and photosynthesize. This is a dovetail joint. Trees do not grow at 90 degree angles, and the grain grows in straight lines, not at, four, at 90 degree angles. Trees were never meant to do this. The thing is, despite the fact that they weren't meant to, they are exceedingly good at it. Much in the same way, Microsoft Excel was never really intended to be writing batch files. But it works. Lighter passes now because we're closer to the line, really close to the line, in fact. More on the right, I think. Not perfect, but suitable to task. That's all we need, isn't it? Okay. So what did I say we're doing next? String inlays, right? Let's see if I can remember how to do these. Let's see if I can get this more or less centered. So, AFK, but watching, well, Well, I do appreciate the conversation is certainly not mandatory. I'm happy to have something more than a goose egg up in my, the upper right hand corner of my screen telling me how many people are watching. And... I want this to be roughly centered, I think. Maybe easier said than done. This is a tricky bit of kit that I have created here and probably not my best work ever, but yeah, for a first attempt, I think it's all right. 
Now, how am I going to... Do I want to do hold fast again? Hold fast seems reasonable. Because it's holding and it is fast. Okay. Nope, nope, that's not going to work at all. Okay, can't do that. So I need to have enough room on this side. Okay, well, I'm just going to by, I'm going to hold it in my hand then. Make sure I'm going off the reference face. That's the important part. Always go off the reference face. And with the scratch stock, critical to make very, 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 very light passes. And again, this is this is precisely the setup I was using with the bookends. And it worked pretty well, except for the distance with the fence. But same blade, same depth of cut. And I don't know if you guys can actually see any of this, but it's got a little, little itty bitty nub poking out. And, oh, okay, that's uh, that was a reminder. Got to get to the meeting. And it doesn't cut uh, very easily. But it's a way to make uh, cuts in the surface of the wood of unusual size and shape. That's the beauty of the scratch stock. Just means you gotta make more and more passes, which is okay. Because it fills time, right? <laughs> now there is a possibility what we could do is maybe I wonder how well this will work. So instead of clamping the workpiece, we could clamp a scratch stock. Does this make sense? Yeah, not really getting good purchase on that, so that's... Good effort, poor execution, right? with the size of this workpiece and the size of the tool, I'm not really finding a good way of doing this. Okay, how about this? How about we do hold fast. Hammer? Okay. Yeah. And we just do one side at a time. Okay, this seems to be working. Got a bit more vibration than I like, but that'll be okay. I think all that's really going to do is maybe make the uh, bottom of the cut a little bit irregular. Which is not that big of an issue. 
because all that's going to mean is the uh, the inlay is going to protrude a bit. But we're going to plane that down in the end anyway, right? So that won't end up mattering just even a little bit. Stay put. We're not done with it yet. And you just got to be careful with this stuff to to make very light cuts. From what I found, so if you try to make too heavy of cuts, just with the 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 cutting steel that we have here, it's it's fairly soft and very thin, and it's pretty easy to bend. I found. This end here is giving me some trouble. Again, this is just one of those things you, you have to figure out how to approach the cuts sometimes, and that's that's sometimes the hardest part. Don't believe Tom Petty, the waiting is not the hardest part. Waiting's easy. I only have to do this with three more boards. It does appear that I've missed a spot. We'll come back to that. Just bring it a little bit closer to counteract the vibration I'm getting at the end. Evidently it's mowing time. 
every day of the week, any hour of daylight, there's someone in this neighborhood mowing the lawn. I'm thinking the ground here is just really, really fertile. And sometimes I have to mow twice a week. Grass just grows so dang fast. Here are so dang big, it might make sense to break it up in multiple days out of the week. All right, I think that's going to do her. Question is is this inlay stock long enough for two pieces, or we're just going to have to do one? Oh no, that'll do just fine. Because we're not going to need this whole thing anyway, so. I'll just go ahead, bring it in maybe a quarter inch from the edge. And let's see if we can get a little bit closer here. So yeah, that's what it's going to look like, more or less, on the front of the box. And I may cut this down, maybe uh, get, get it a little bit thinner. And this will be going all the way around the front. And I'm going to have splines on the edges here joining them together. And those will be in uh, maple, so it's going to be maple, basswood, and walnut. And that is what the box is going to look like. I'm just going to check the time here real quick. 440. I got plenty of time. But I am out of water, so I'm going to go AFK just for a second. I'll be right back. Oh yeah, let's, let's bring the picture back in. All right, so piece number two, a reference edge, reference face. Let's go ahead, get that clamp down, and start to cutting. Maybe this one will go a little bit faster. I'll start from the edge.
work my way towards the middle. And again, just not cutting on the end here for some reason. Doesn't seem to ever want to cut at the end of the board for some reason. We'll make two though, we'll make two. sure that I don't have an appropriate thickness blade in my number 45 plane. But that might make quick work of this too. Now that I've mentioned it, I feel obligated to check. too big. The repostable option if I ever decide to maybe cut my own inlay material rather than just buying it free to mention from Michael's or Hobby Lobby. Put your fence against the reference face. And always mark your reference face. Or you will have a bad, bad day. You're gonna need to find some better way of doing that. Your face camera and such.
the smart thing to do might have been to put the teeth facing the other direction of the saw blade. Did grind them down, but you know, we're still kind of there. Oh well. Lessons for next time. Someday I'll make a better scratch stack, but the first half to the side, what that's going to look like. Hopefully one that doesn't chatter as much. my new time slot. We're doing inlays today. So we're making a uh, very, very, very fancy shadow box. stream about 30 minutes ago. I didn't realize you were streaming. Actually, I don't think I'm following you. That's, uh... I'll have to double check that. I might have to correct it. But yeah, I was out, out and about in town. Wife picked up her new World of Warcraft expansion. Best Buy refused to release it until today. Yes, I know, I know. What were you streaming? What were you, were you working on something? Or doing gaming? Not sure I actually know what you do on the stream. Right, right, right. Legos. Actually, I think I may have seen you do that before. It's just unfortunate that uh, a lot of the people I, I'm, I'm mostly active in Quint stream, so. He usually has a decent time slot where I can uh, watch the stream. And, and nearly every other time that I'm watching someone, it's just kind of like catch a glimpse here or there. But never really uh, participate all that much. All right, and I have got a groove. This would be a nice little basswood inlay to go around the front of our shadow box. All right, got two more of these to cut. And we gotta do miters. Well, no, no, we're gonna do glue first, then miters. Actually, a little closer. Because vibration. Make sure I'm on the reference edge, which I am.
Now traditionally, you would use holly for these inlays. But holly, you have to get mail order or make it yourself. And it's uh, much, much more expensive. And honestly, who's going to be able to tell the difference? Are you talking about the uh, the holdfasts? Yeah, I, I'm I'm most certainly a fan of the holdfasts. They're quick, simple, versatile. They require minimal setup. So pretty much the uh, the work work holding I have on this bench is just a face vise, which is this uh, uh, a, a metal vise, metal face vise, quick release type, and hold fast. So that's that's pretty much what I use. Yeah, you know, sometimes I'll use like plain stops. I've got my my dogs, obviously, which are approximately the same di diameter as the hold fast, so I can use the same holes for them. Yeah, no, no tail vice on this bench. Well, I'm not necessarily a fan of these old fasts in particular, but they were the ones that were readily available. I used to have a woodcraft store 30 minutes from the house. Now it's about a two or three hour drive. Nashville's the closest one to me. of hold fast if you do like a quick clamp like around the edge those work pretty good pretty much the same take a little bit more time to set up but uh, and you can't do them like in the middle of the bench but you know they're, they're perfectly fine if that's what you got and this advantage of the hold fast is you can't use them when you're not on the bench I'm not sure where over here is. But you could make a similar argument because I, I would be leaving the state. Netherlands, okay. to the Netherlands. I do have family ties of it to it for my uh, for my dad's side. They tell me I'm a quarter Dutch. Not that I think that actually means anything to proper Dutch people.
You proud of you? Well. There, are, I, I believe there are some peculiarities that I have inherited from my dad's side. That, from what I understand, are related to Dutch culture. Or at least more common. The, uh, let's see, fiscal modesty. I, I, I believe is a, a, a more prevalent Dutch trait than it is in, a, in the American culture. So, my grandmother, my, my dad's mother, was the daughter of Dutch immigrants. And so, I, uh, I happened upon an article on Wikipedia, which you might be able to reference, which was a, um, just like a list of Dutch cultural traits. And traditions like um, etiquette around the dinner table, that sort of thing. And just reading through those, it was like, oh, okay, my childhood's starting to make a bit more sense now. Because a lot of the things we did or in my family um, were not typical amongst American families, or as typical, I should say. So it kind of made sense having some uh, Dutch heritage that, uh, that we might do that as well. So I don't remember anything other than the, the I, I think it was like the always asking permission to leave the dinner table or um, uh, never showing off your wealth, that sort of thing. Oh. One of the really, really annoying habits I picked up, unfortunately from my dad, is that I always have to pay for the meal. And it's not a conditional requirement. It's that if you're from my family, you must pay for the meal. Which gets really, really awkward when we're going out as a family outing. Blood has not been shed yet, but I do not discount the possibility. Well, no, it's, it's, if I invite someone out to a meal, I feel obligated to pay for the meal. If someone else invites me out to the meal, no, no, not, not, not everyone pays their own part. I pay for everyone's meal. That's, that's, that's the obligation I feel. It's, it's, it's weird. Remember one particular incident when I was about to... Go the rest of the family go Dutch. Now, see, it's it, it it doesn't actually work that way for us. Um, I remember one particular incident. I think I was like 12 years old. We went to uh, went to breakfast with uh, my parents and and grandma, and grandma was trying to pay the bill because that's how she was, 
and my dad was also trying to pay the bill. And they were using me as a proxy because they sent me to the cashier, cashier with money, or they were trying to hand me money to go to the cashier. And more or less, it was my choice who was paying for the meal. And uh, as much as I love grandma, dad knows where I slept. She has long since passed. In fact, I think, uh, true gentleman, no, I, um, I, I value my life and, uh, <laughs> I, I knew Grandma could not bring nearly as much pain as Dad could. So last I checked, my grandfather on my dad's side is still alive, and step-grandma is still alive. Those are the only grandparents I have left. All the rest have passed. But that's to be expected when you get to be my age. We haven't many grandparents left. Yeah, but my uh, my maternal grandfather was the last one I uh, to go that I know of. Paternal grandfather don't really have much dealing with him, so he doesn't really matter all that much. Um, but yeah, we celebrated like his 94th birthday before he went, which is a good age, I would say. did stuff with his life too. Served in the Navy, discharged, studied engineering, was an active member of the school board, worked in the aerospace in industry designing, well, he was designing airplane parts where he wasn't allowed to go into the specifics. Lost my father when he was 83. Well, I'm definitely sorry to hear that. That's, uh, that's never fun. I mean, there, there comes a time when you kind of start to expect it, but you rarely want to see them go. Granddad, when he was uh, when he was eighty or when he was ninety four, you could tell he was done. I mean, there's there there comes a time when you realize that you haven't got a whole lot to do left to do. Yeah, that, uh, 
That is the way of things. That, that is how old people do. And it is invariably so. I think one of the most regrettable is when uh, mental faculties invariably will start to deteriorate and it was uh, it was quite sad with my grandfather who was by all rights a genius all right um, he had forgotten more in his lifetime than I will ever know And just to, to see him deteriorate mentally, he was still smarter than most of us. But uh, it, it, it was sad to, 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 to have him lose so much. That was obviously of such great importance to him. All right. That's the end of my inlay cutting. How am I doing for time? 5'10". Okay. So... Next here, we're just going to uh, get these glued up, I think. Maybe a little chisel. Probably not the best way of doing things, but it works. And I've got some tight bond number two, which is my favorite glue, except in this bottle where it is terrible. I think the standard for these is to use CA glue, but I haven't got any. So we're using the PVA or whatever this is called. And so this is actually, uh, they had a small seminar last month at the Woodworking Club about string inlays. And therefore, it became a challenge for this month to make something with string inlays. Not this project. The, the project was the, uh, the bookends, which was my last one. Okay. And I think after I got get all these glued in. I'm probably gonna call it quits for this stream. I think that's about all I can reasonably take on without going over my time limit. And hopefully, so next time, next, uh, next episode will be on Friday with any luck. It is if uh, school does not completely mess me up, which it may. I'm gonna spend what? 2003 was the last time I was in college. <laughs> uh, and that was like a community college at Fort Riley. So, yeah, I am not. 100% certain of what I'm going to be or what I should expect here at the State University. So Friday the glue will be very much cured.
And I should be able to clean these flush. I'm studying computer science. I'm going for a, a bachelor's in computer science. So I don't know necessarily what the Netherland equivalent is. I think it's, uh, what do you, what do you call that university? Yeah, so, um, you may have heard me mention before, I am a, a retiree from the United States Army. And we have a lovely, lovely education benefit that I have put off using for many, many years because I want for retirement rather than just do, you know, four years and get out. But if you serve three years, you get what's known as the GI Bill. So this is a education program of sorts that uh, not only pays tuition for us, but um, also pays a housing stipend to me. So I will make money by going to school. Yeah, I actually have no intention of working in the field because, you know, I got a pension, so why would I? Um, but uh, I am a fan of open source software, uh, heavy user of it, and I thought the best way I could give back to that community who has uh, done quite a bit to help me is to learn how to do it myself and contribute to those projects. Bass would just cut so easy. Like it's not even there. I'm also considering um, doing what's known as a human resources certificate where uh, working in human resources around here generally requires just a certificate, um, but the, the degree concentration, the major, can be really anything. So once you have, say, a bachelor's degree, no, nope, no. Nope. Uh, in pretty much any subject, any major, you can then go on to get a human resources certificate, which would qualify you to pretty much work anywhere in the country in human resources. And that appeals to me simply because that's my background in the army. I was uh, I was in retention. And I was a career counselor, so yeah, most closely related in human resources, similar to recruiting. So uh, I don't have any qualifications to work in the civilian market, but I have a lot of relatable experience. So again, it's one of those things that I have zero intention of ever working in that field, but it would be nice to have a backup. You know, in case the government shuts down and decides not to pay my pension anymore. Which has happened in the past. We had a, a shutdown because our Congress um, neglected to pass a budget. I think this was around 2010, something like that. 2009, 2010. This is not lining up right, so.
Yeah, the uh, because they didn't have a budget, they could not pay the soldiers. And um, fortunately, the way it worked out is they uh, they cut they they did pass a budget between pay periods. So. There, there was certainly a threat that we would not be paid for that month, um, but back pay obviously would occur. But uh, yeah, uh, we didn't actually miss any of our pay, so that was good. All right, and we're gonna leave these to dry. Um, come back in a couple of days and sand them down, run a plane over them. That will smooth them out uh, just fine, actually. This is, this is the real reason why you keep shavings around, is to clean your hands off and to, to wipe off glue. So, that's what we did. Uh, recap, finish the miters on one of these boards, let's see where the camera is, did rabbits on all of them, got these pieces dimensioned, got grooves cut in for the inlays and the inlays set in there, and that's going to be real, real pretty, that's, uh, that's going to look a lot better than oak, and uh, next time, so Friday, we're gonna have to figure out what order we wanna do these. Um, I'm gonna sand these down a little bit, get the glue off, plane it flush. We'll start thinking about how we wanna do the miters on there, because I'm just not really sure at the moment. And we can kind of gauge, now that we have the thickness of these, um, where we want to do our splines, because we want the spines to be evenly spaced. What time is it on my side right now? It should be 5.22 p.m. So, uh, 17.22, if you're, if you're doing the 24-hour clock. Um, I, I start at uh, 3 o'clock my time. Um... And let's see, so yeah, now, now that we got these together, we can figure out where to put the splines because we want to put the splines evenly spaced and we're doing kind of an angle spline, so we're doing like a fake dovetail. Done that before once, just as a practice, it worked out pretty good. I think it should be seven hours further ahead. That's, that's really early dirt. Shouldn't you be going to bed or something? <laughs> I can't stay up that late. And again, I can't sleep in past like six in the morning. <laughs> and yeah, that's uh, that's what we're doing next time. Uh, hopefully, I think uh, I think we can get the splines in on the next stream. I think that would be nice. Um, got some maple for that. I think that'll be really pretty. But yeah, uh, that's gonna do it for me. Um, I'm going to check here in a minute to see who's online. Uh, anybody you can recommend, Dirk, or uh, this? All right, uh, yeah, uh, that's, that's hopefully what I'm doing. Subject to change. If you want to follow me on Twitter, I generally announce uh, stuff there too. And I've got a widget. Um, if you're on the web page, if you're on mobile, you're out of luck. But a uh, widget on on my on the Twitch page, which shows a countdown to and when and when the streams happen, and I believe they localize that, so it should reflect your local time if you're looking at that. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna see who else is streaming right now, uh, and Yak Branson. Well, I guess I'm rating Yak Branson then. <laughs> but I'm going to go AFK and I guess we'll see you over there.